everybody. Recording live from somewhere. This is Zach Couples with episode number 147 of the Movement Debrief. And today, folks, we're about to get Galapagos up in here because we're going to talk about evolution. No, folks, not about finches and stuff like that, but about your boy, Big Z's thought process and model. How has it changed over the last several years? These are the questions that we'll be diving into today because your boy, Big Z, Grande El Z, has got a bunch of questions that have been asked by the people. They will be answered for the people by this people right here, fam recognized fam. Without further ado, let's debrief, shall we? The first and only question today comes from Stephen or Stefan. However you pronounce your name, that's how it goes. Here's what this individual asked. How has your strategy slash perspective evolved over the last couple of years? Fam recognized fam. Indeed. It's, uh, I, th I think it's changed a fair amount over the last few years. If we kind of look at just how my thought process has evolved from the beginning, like starting from the bottom, like your favorite Drake song, it was uh, very much kind of along the lines where Bill was because he was my mentor coming out of PT school. We did a lot of manual therapy. We did just a lot of coaching, good exercise, very Sarman biased to some extent with a little sprinkle of PRI. I started with um, that point, then I kind of really dived into the PRI side of things. It really went ham in that sense, took a bunch of other con ed, you know, SFMA, FMS, a little bit of this here and there, some ma different manual techniques. And that's kind of where I was. And I'd say in the last few years, what's really morphed my strategy towards where I am right now it is uh, two things really have, have kind of put me here. One is taking Bill Hartman's intensive and seeing how he has expanded the model or his model to the extent that he has. If you are unfamiliar with Daddy O Pops, Bill Hartman himself, you should be. I'll link him in the show notes. And folks, that'll be found on zachcouples.com forward slash evolution. You definitely want to check that out because there'll be links to all of the show notes and things that I mention as we discuss this. So if there's different courses and things like that, you'll also get a blog. If you are watching this on IG and you're like, Ooh, the quality is sketch. I want to see a sexier HD version. I get it. It's going to be on YouTube and you'll also have a podcast version so you can listen to me. So definitely give it a shot after you've done, check this out. So Bill Hartman's intensive, huge game changer for me. And I think the reason why is because earlier in my career, a lot of the stuff that I was doing was much more protocol driven and not necessarily helping me think for myself in that sense. And I think some of that too is just being a young clinician. You kind of you kind of need that because you just don't have as many repetitions under your belt to start to, to really see these patterns. So you, you know, that's one of the benefits of mentorship or following a system is because it kind of gives you that, that book to follow through with. The issue happens is when you have someone who deviates from that. And that's when I was running into problems with some of the earlier stuff that I had learned is you'd find people who didn't fit the, the model. So what do you do there? What I think Bill has done really well is he's provided principles to act upon that you follow these principles and if you operate under these principles, it can help you act in situations that are unfamiliar or when someone doesn't fit the stereotypical model. That's one thing. The other thing that I think that his model in particular has helped me with quite a bit is if there's concepts or components that I think are less clear. One thing that I've been struggling with personally, because I think it is a little bit on the muddy side, even within the context of Bill's model, at least when I had taken it and with conversations I've had with him in the past, is how are things going from elbow, wrist, and hand? There's just a lot of stuff going on. I don't think the mechanics are as crystal clear as they could be, say, at the knee or at the, the foot ankle, because the iteration would be the same thing. 
namely because you know, the electron is pointing backwards, but tell is pointing forwards. That leads to things being a little confusing. However, applying some of the, the concepts within that model, compression expansion or the joint mechanics, or just thinking of flexion abduction ER being paired, extension abduction IR being paired, those things have allowed me to better consume material such as this wonderful book, which has been a godsend. If, you, if you're ever interested in hand and wrist and elbow, this is the book, uh, Hand and Wrist Rehabilitation by, who's it by? Gregory Mesplier, perhaps? It's French. It's a super tough read uh, because it's a French translation. But I'll link it. Check it out. But thinking of it with that framework has allowed me to better consume that so I can better appreciate the mechanics going on at the elbow, wrist, and hand. One. Two, it then allows me to apply or design exercises based off of those mechanics. And I think if you can develop principles of your own that transcend protocol-driven based things, that's extremely useful. So I got to give kudos to Daddy O'Pops for that because that's probably been the most transformative thing over the last years. And it's allowed me to operate things based off of these principles. The second thing that I think has really morphed what I'm doing is going into myofunctional therapy. That started with me getting the tongue tie release so I can get that tongue up against the roof of my mouth. I had to do myofunctional therapy for that. For those of you who don't know what myofunctional therapy is, it's basically physical therapy for the mouth. So you can work on tongue placement, chewing, swallowing. It's awesome. I went through it with the tongue tie surgery and I started applying some of the activities with some of my Supreme clientele. And the problem areas that I had seen with everything that I had learned in the past seemed to go away. I felt like with the model that I utilized, that's kind of a version of Bill's, worked great from about C5 on down. But if I had to go above C5, yeah, it was getting a little hazy. Myofunctional therapy seemed to really help squash some of those hard cases, whether it, whether it was restricted neck range of motion, TMJ issues, headaches. I could give just a couple tongue-based exercises and it led to vast improvements that I just wasn't seeing anywhere else. And in myself, because after I had the tongue tie surgery, I had myofunctional therapy there. Took a great myofunctional class by uh, AOMT. I'll link them because they're great. I did that. And then I'm also working with a myofunctional therapist who I'm going to be interviewing for my podcast soon. She is freaking awesome. Her name's Melissa Mugno. You'll definitely want to check her out. But the combination of working with all of those people and applying the concepts that I've learned within that domain has led to a big change in improving some of the movement options that I was restricted in previously. It has also shifted my practice towards really appreciating how damn important sleep is. There's a really cool study that I read when I was giving a, a talk on sleep's relationships to pain a few years back. And they found in this study that sleep sleep disorders have a causal role in pain. When you hear causal in research, you should be like, whoa, this is some serious shizzy. And this most certainly was, folks, serious shizzy. Because sleep, if you have a sleep dis disturbance, that could potentially increase how long persistent pain may last. It could make you predisposed to having pain bout within the next year. Lots of different things. It's a cool article. You'll definitely want to check it out. But it made me really think about my clients, and it made me start looking more at sleep issues. So where I work at at Elevate and online, if someone mentions some sleep stuff, I oftentimes refer them to a sleep study. And you would be amazed at how many times within the last year I've caught someone, or not me, but the sleep study has caught someone who's had sleep apnea or upper airway, airway resistance syndrome. Sleep apnea, undiagnosed, untreated, can have a wide variety of negative effects, ranging from potentially increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease or stroke, all the way to shortening your life expectancy by about like 20%. That's dramatic. If you can catch that and then help someone with that, 
it can have wide ranging systemic effects, not just from like, okay, your shoulder moves better BS, but you might live longer. You might not die of a stroke. That's impactful. And that's something I think that a lot of us are neglecting because we aren't being taught how to properly screen for those things. Diving into the myofunctional therapy side of things has really flipped that switch for me. And it's an area that I look forward to improving upon in the future and helping more people with that. I would say those two areas, Daddy O Pops's stuff, the way he's progressed the model and myofunctional therapy have led to major changes in how I approach things. Now, you might be wondering, well, okay, Zach, this sounds well and good, but what, like, what does your approach look like nowadays? Well, I'm glad you asked. My approach is basically focusing on increasing someone's movement options, so making sure they have all of the available range of motion that they should have in their bodies, and then making sure that they demonstrate the ability to have movement competency within those ranges of motion in a wide variety of situations. So let's suppose if I took a, a, a task such as a vertical jump, and when I say vertical jump, I want you to stay vertical. I want you to have a quick dip as you go down. I want your pelvis to have vertical displacement. You should go up in the air as high as you can. And maybe your vertical jump is whack and you want your boy Big Z to take you higher, like your favorite Creed song. Well, the way I would help you with that is by making sure we have special technique for your vertical jumps. We work on technical aspects of that, and that could be doing a wide variety of plyometrics. And then we break it down to Generation X style by having you demonstrate the movement qualities needed to have a rock solid vertical jump. So that might mean within your program, you have some type of squat variation. You might have in your dynamic warm-up a wonderful move such as the drunken turtle, which helps get your body in essentially the same position as the bottom of a squat, but now we're moving so in a dynamic fashion to increase the range of motion that you need to squat well, which would involve the pelvis being able to tuck underneath itself, your whole backside going into flexion or posterior expansion, knees going forward. And then I might break that down to something like a Lewitt position tilt, where that may assist you at the bottom portion of your squat, or the mid-range, I should say, in case you might be an individual who has a loss of hip internal rotation, which is kind of needed for a squat. And then on the conditioning side of things, we could use a rowing machine, which at the, the bottom, I guess, or the, the point where the cable goes inward, you're kind of in the bottom of a squat in that position. So you could see with just that move, we've stoked you getting into that position many different times. And I try to design all of my programs with my uh, training clients or even my movement consultation clients, link in the show notes if you're interested, in that same fashion. And that's the concept that we talk about in Human Matrix is how can we increase the movement repertoire that your supreme clientele has and then how can we demonstrate movement competency within those options under load. That's really what my process looks like when I'm working with someone and that's how I design my programs. One thing that I would say I'm emphasizing a lot more now and I have to give credit to this podcast that my boy Doug Kachijian at Resilient did with Boo Shexinator. I almost did my impression of him. Y'all ain't ready for that. Uh, but, but he talks about pursuing intensity before going after volume. And after hearing that, it's really made me think about applying intensity much sooner in my programs than I was previously. So a lot of my work now has been incorporating a wide variety of plyometrics, oscillatory isometrics, and things where people have to move fast and explosive. And I've seen a lot of clients who perhaps couldn't tolerate heavier loads do really well with that and get great improvements in power explosiveness. And I've also seen it increase movement options. So that's been an area that I've really focused on recently improving with my peeps. And in terms of areas where I'm kind of going to the next, what's the next level on to the next one really diving into getting more in depth with my plyometric progressions is one thing that I really want to get into that. And also like, I, I think one area that I've probably neglected studying is more of the fine tuning training based um, progressions, because once you, 
once you get someone movement competency, they're able to squat well, deadlift, push, pull, they have more range of motion available than they normally would, what do you do next? Well, the next level of that is just pushing their physiological processes so they can do things faster, they can, they can achieve those positions and do it under intensity, they can do it when they're pushing heavy loads or producing force, and they can do it for longer periods of time. What are the best ways to do that? I think that's the next forefront for your boy. Other places I really want to get into would be learning more about sleep. I think that that's a really big area. I think there's some things that I could do a better job with on the sleep hygiene and environment side of things, but also too, how can I fine tune getting someone through the ringer that I've kind of taken myself through? And what's, what are the most efficient and effective ways? And are there people in wonderful Las Vegas that I can refer them to? And building out that network. I think that that's really a big deal. I think another thing that I, I look towards getting into is really refining and simplifying the processes that I have. Well, I think the model that I use is pretty good and it's simple. I oftentimes find myself getting too complicated with exercises. And although with most people, I emphasize the stack to the nth degree, and I still spend a great deal of time on that, and I think you should too. This model gets really expansive, and where I work at at Elevate, I get some complex cases where I need to go after restoring foot range of motion to help someone's hip get better, or when you get into the, some of the sleep and myofunctional side of things, you can really go down that rabbit hole really far. And I think it's good, and I think you sometimes need to do that when you're working with someone when in pain or high-level performers. But are there ways that we can get those options back that are even simpler than the moves that I have now? Can I get that with only using two cues as opposed to five different things that you need to feel at once? Can I get it with the plyometric progression? These are the questions that I think about on a daily basis that I need to try to find an easier way. You want to always strive to make things ridiculously simple, one. That's why, you know, when I in, in the seminar, Human Matrix, Human Matrix, excuse me, I try to talk about heuristics. What are things that, that we can apply that maybe aren't 100% accurate, but they get the result that you want, and it's simpler for your clients to execute? To me, I think that is always on the frontier for myself, and I need to continue to do a better job of that because it's not just going to help my people, it's going to help you because, you know, one reason you probably hang out with your boy all the time is because this stuff in our movement field gets so freaking complicated, and I don't think it has to be. What is the 80%? If you can find stuff that helps 80% of your peeps and you got that 20% that's tough, well, you're still going to be helping most people. And I'm going to try my darndest to, to see if I can make my 80% really solid, which in turn will help your 80%. The last thing that I hope to get into is breathing physiology. I had mentioned before that once you have the movement repertoire side of things, where do you go next? And it's pursuing and pushing physiology, whether that's getting yourself stronger, building your endurance, whatever. I think one area that I've neglected in my learning is doing the same thing for breathing. So I'm interested in pursuing more buteco based stuff or like resident frequency breathing. I actually had a really good talk with a couple friends this weekend about some of the things that they're doing on the breathing physiology side of things. And I get questions about that and it's just an area that I don't know a lot about, but I do think there's a lot of valuable real estate that we can pursue with our supreme clientele in that domain. I've seen amazing biomechanical changes with peeps just by incorporating breathing in particular positions. Can we see the same thing when we're pushing breathing physiology? I think it's something that is very worthwhile to pursue in my learning. And if you got suggestions, please shoot me a message because I'm a, I, I really want to get better at that because I think it can help my peeps better. And that's really the evolution of where my model came from, where I'm at right now, and where I want to go. It's more principle-based. Kudos to Daddy O Pops. Kudos to AOMT, my functional therapy. I got to give a shout-out to my boy Joseph and Ellie and Melissa and my girl. She's not my boy. My girl, Melissa Mugno, for really helping me push me 
down that route. Also, kudos to Dr. Brian Hockle, who's been my dentist, Ruth Zaghi. Those, those peeps are pioneers. They've helped me a lot. Um, that's kind of where I'm at now and where I want to go is refining, getting better at teaching peeps how to produce intensity, studying breathing physiology, and my hope is my peeps continue to get better results because I'm getting myself better. I think that's a good stopping point for us today. You folks have been an amazing, sexy audience per usual. I, I really appreciate y'all tuning in. And if you want to learn more, check out me out at zackcouples.com. And that's especially where the show notes are going to be. You're going to get a ton of free stuff. You'll get access to all the debriefs, blogs. Sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free acute to chronic work, workload uh, calculator. You're going to get... Uh, access to Human Matrix Foundations, my free seminar. If you want to really get into the biomechanics and you're like, eh, I need a kind of a, a foundation to help me with that, that's kind of what that's there for. You'll also get the coaching or common compensations workbook, excuse me, which will help you apply that material because it's going to allow you to streamline what compensations you see because really most issues that we see boil down to one or two strategies. What are those strategies? Well, if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll learn them. So check that out. Also, seminar, folks, Human Matrix. We kind of talked about the evolution and stacking and what are the basics. If you want to learn about how to apply that programming and what does a good squat look like, that's the seminar to do it. I got a bunch of live ones happening this year. The next one that is happening is May 29th and 30th in Boston, Massachusetts. And then I got August 14th and 15th, Ann Arbor, Michigan, September 25th and 26th in Wyckoff, New Jersey. Evidently, I've been pronouncing that wrong this whole time. Shame on me. October 23rd, 24th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And November 6th and 7th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Raise up. I'm hoping to get a couple others too this year. Stay tuned. Also, services. We mentioned training. So when I talked about expanding movement options, and also applying it on a fitness perspective, that's what training does. So if you're someone who, uh, you know, I'm just not moving as well as I'd like to, I don't feel great when I do my program. Maybe you've been deadlifting some heavy ass weights and you're like, Ugh, my back ain't feeling right, what's going on there? Your boy can help you with that by showing you what is going on there by writing your program based off of a movement consultation that we do where I coach you through some stuff find out where your restrictions are, and then we design the program based on your fitness goals. Perhaps you're not ready to commit to the fitness side of things and you just want to move a little bit better. A movement consultation can help you with that as well, where I basically do an assessment, run you through some various activities to help improve your movement capabilities and get you going. If you want to learn how to do this with your Supreme clientele, because they are supreme, I get it. Mentoring is also a good way of expanding upon that because with the mentorship program, what we can do is I can look at any didactic issues you may have. Maybe you're having a hard time understanding the elbow and you want to troubleshoot through that with your boy. I can help you with that, but information's free. That's the easy part. The hard part is application. And what's been really useful for my mentees is I watch you apply your stuff. So I might have you video doing something with your clients. I might have you go through cases and we'll troubleshoot through that and see what's going on. That is where the bread and butter is with this stuff. So definitely check me out there. Once you've scoured ZachCouples.com, you've signed up for all my services, you're coming to Human Matrix, you've read every blog, and you're wondering, I want more. The next place to go is Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Search The Zach Couples Show. Because guess what, folks? There's 146 other debriefs out there, and, uh, you know... Orange is the new black, and they say it's a good color on me, but you might not be seeing me wear that color in earlier debriefs. Maybe you just want to give me a listen. Take me on a long car ride or a long walk on the beach. That's a great way to do it. Check me out, Apple Podcasts and Stitcher, The Zach Couple Show. While you're there, please, I implore you, leave a review so the fam can keep growing. Other places you can find me, I'm all over the social medias. You'll find me on YouTube by searching Zach Couples on YouTube. I got a gang of exercises. You want to move better, but you don't know what move to give. Well, YouTube can give you that. So check me out there. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. If you search Z Couples, and of course, I'm on the Instagram, baby. 
see. Zach, Z-A-C, couple C-U-P-P-L-E-S. That's where you can find me. That's what I got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. You've been a beautiful, sexy, outstanding audience. I hope that you keep it real, but not to the extent where things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.